first step, get on chair elegantly. <laughs> Um, Mandisa, it's just so lovely to chat to you this morning, and I've heard your story five or six times, and it is one of such challenge and inspiration. So why don't you start by telling us where you were born? Oh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mandisa. I was born in South Africa, uh, in Eastern Cape, in the little Karo region, in a town called Aberdeen. And what happened to you when you were about three years old? When I grew up in South Africa, when I was about three years old, uh, there's a time that I realized that actually I did not have a mother. I had a great grandmother living with us. It was three of us, myself, my brother, and my sister. My sister was the oldest, my brother the middle, and I was the youngest. And it was normal in South Africa to to see people, especially where I lived, because it was out of the countryside, to see people without parents. The parents were working in the city, so I thought that was the case with me as well. My mom has gone maybe to go and work in the city until my grandmother died, and then that's when I realized, actually, my mom was not in the city. My mom is just gone. And um, when my grandmother died, my aunts, uncles and everyone came to the funeral and my mom wasn't there. And um, the funeral went through and everybody headed home, which is in the city where they came from, which Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. And there was myself, my sister, my brother, and one of my aunt from Cape Town and my other aunt from PE, which is Port Elizabeth. And then the question came, oh, what's going to happen to these kids? Because the lady that was looking after us has now died. And both my aunt and my other aunt work in the city as well. My aunt from Cape Town volunteered and said, I'll take the older one, which was my sister. And my aunt from PE said, she will take the two of us, which is myself and my brother. We were three years apart. And we went to live in Port Elizabeth from that time. As I say, I've heard that before many times, but every time I'm just so moved by how much loss you went through and kind of complex loss because you didn't really understand what happened to your mum and then your grandmother also died. And at this point, you're only about four or five years old and then you're split from your oldest sister as well. Yes. Such a challenging time. And um, so once you were in Port Elizabeth, you went to school for the first time one day and what happened then? Before I went to Port Elizabeth, I was going to school in Aberdeen, but it was not a big deal. It was like almost like a nursery. We just went there and come back. And until I went to, to and everybody had a nickname when it comes to, um, to Aberdeen. So when I came to PE, I went to school, to proper school now. The teacher asked me, so what's your name? So I told my teacher my name was Nzuki, which is the name that was in my official books. And the teacher said, no, that's not the right name. And everyone else, funny enough, both my brother and my sister, they had nicknames, but they had proper names as well that they were called officially. And they tried to ask me what was my name, and my name was Nsuki. And he said, no, that's not the right name. You must have another name. Go home, come back tomorrow with a proper name. And I went home, and I thought, what's my proper name? I couldn't find any name anywhere around the house that was my name, except for Nzuki, which could mean just like Fluffy or anything, whatever you want to call um, somebody's nickname. And I decided, okay, I've got a name. I'm going to go to school tomorrow, and I'm going to tell my teacher what my name was. I got to school, and the teacher asked me, so what's your name? I said, my name is Mandisa. And the teacher said, wow, that's a lovely name. Great, I told you that you've got a name. So that was my official name, which I gave to myself. <laughs> I can see everyone in the room thinking their children are about to rename themselves, possibly, <laughs> after Easter. I know that in South Africa, names mean an awful lot, and it's important that the name literally means something. So what does Mandisa mean? Mandisa means make happy, which is a joy bringer. And if you know Mandisa, isn't that just so fitting for her? Um, so, uh, I guess about 10 years later, your mum came back. Do you want to tell us about that? It was in the afternoon. I was uh, at home sitting in the porch, and my aunt 
looked outside by the gate and said, wow, there's your mom. And it was myself and my brother. My brother went and embraced my mom. I stood back and I knew something was wrong. <sighs> I never went to embrace my mom and she came back with three more kids which were younger than us and um, two girls and a boy and we tried to live happily ever after but unfortunately that didn't happen uh, I soon find out that my mom had an alcohol well. problem and she was an alcoholic and soon she left myself my brother and my three other siblings. And my aunt has raised all the five of us. It's such a journey for someone so young to go through. Thank you so much for sharing, up with, sharing with us. Um, I'll just tell the next bit of the story. I know that obviously at that point you're a young teenager in South Africa um, single, and here you are today, married to the wonderful Zola. You've got three children. Amanda Zola you had out in South Africa, and then Somi and Yaya you had here. Um, you trained to be a nurse. You flew way ahead of your colleagues and were given a job very quickly in the UK. Once you came to the UK, why don't you tell us what happened next? I came to the UK in 1999, and I was 27, and I... When I look back now, I believe that God's got a way of taking you away from your familiar surroundings because that time I was not a Christian. Although I grew up going to Anglican church with my aunt, I was just a church grower, but never gave my life to Christ. While I was sleeping in my bed in Hayward's Heath, um, I heard a very loud voice, audible voice from God saying this, Can a mother forget the child that he nursed? Can a mother have no compassion on her own child? Though your mother and your father has forsaken me, I, the Lord, will never forsake you. That was just as clear as the sky. And I thought, that's it. God has always been there for me. That was a turnaround life for me and concentrating on the way forward. I looked for a church. I found King's Church and uh, in Clare Hall in Hayward Seath. And I went and I did the Alpha course as well. Throughout my walk during those early days, I could see footprints in the sand, that God has always been there for me. Loads of things could have happened to me in South Africa. Many of my age group colleagues, they are no longer with us, as young as we are. You can say otherwise, but I still think I'm young. <laughs> and to know the truth of God's love, it's the most important thing, and God was there and to know that God will always be there for me and God will never forsake me. And from early days, God has always been there. Amen. And as you look back and see God in your life before you he even acknowledged him, you think that may even, he may even have an, in, an impact on the choice you made of your name? God knew my name, even though I didn't know what my name was. I believe that God knew what my name was going to be and orchestrated my life according to my name that he gave me. I believe that name Mandisa was given by God to me. Yeah. Let's say a massive thank you to Mandisa.